be on gel electrophoresis. Um, basically what gel electrophoresis does, it separates uh, molecules out based on size. So the molecule we're going to be working with is DNA. All right, DNA is a really, really long molecule made up of nucleotides, all right, millions of them. So let's just say that here's our DNA molecule, all right, that black line. I'm going to move this down so we can still see it, all right? So in gel electrophoresis, we use these enzymes called restriction enzymes. All right, and what restriction enzymes do is they cut up DNA at specific points, all right? Uh, they're called restriction points. And every time a restriction enzyme sees a particular sequence of, say, like AATCG, all right, every time it sees that, it's going to cut it in, this, in that same spot. So every time it comes across that, it's going to cut it, it's going to cut it, it's going to cut it. So let's take our restriction enzyme, which is just our eraser today, and we're going to cut this DNA. So we'll cut it there, cut it there, and we'll cut it there. All right, so this restriction enzyme cut it up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the uh, gel, and you're going to see it's going to separate it with electricity. So the bigger pieces aren't going to move that far. They'll move a little bit. And as you get smaller, they're going to move farther and farther. And we're going to see bands in the DNA when we run it. And that's the minimum, like the, the ultimate like basic explanation of gel electrophoresis. Each of these chunks is called an RFLP. All right, that stands for Restriction Fragment Length Polymorphs Polymorphism. That's a fancy way of saying different sizes of DNA, different size chunks of DNA. Um, so that's what we're going to see in our gels. And now I'm going to show you how to properly uh, load and run a gel. look at your DNA samples, um, you're going to see that the DNA is kind of scattered throughout the entire vial. All right, that's the purple stuff in there, and you can see it's on the sides of the vial. It's, there's some at the bottom. We want to get it all concentrated at the bottom so we get uh, as much of the DNA as we can. So in order to do that, we're going to use this micro centrifuge right here. Okay. Um, now, when you load a centrifuge, you can see all these little slots here. All right. I'm going to load the centrifuge so that the samples are completely opposite from each other. All right, so they're going to kind of balance each other out. So if you do this and it's not, it's not balanced, the machine could get damaged. It would just uh, go all over the place, wobble, and, uh, and possibly break. So we put it on there. We're going to close this lid. And then we could spin it. Um, all you need to do is for about 10 seconds. So it's going to go... Um, really, really fast. We'll, we'll put it up to 10,000 RPMs. Uh, now when you do spin it, you want to hold on to it with, with one hand when you turn it on because I'll show you what happens if you don't. So here's 6,000 RPMs. Now, as soon as you bump it up to 10,000, it's going to like really give a kick. So if you're not holding on to it, the whole thing kicks. All right, so you want to make sure you're holding on to it. Leave it for a few seconds. Turn it off. We'll let it uh, stop spinning. Then we can pop it. And you'll see that that sample that was spread out everywhere is now concentrated all at the bottom of that vial. So this is a micro pipetter uh, that we're going to be using. It, it sucks in your DNA sample in very, very small amounts. Uh, through that little tip right there. All right. So to use this, the plunger is what allows you to, to suck in material and, uh, and spit it back out. So with this, when you take in a sample, there's two ways you could press it. You could push it till you feel a little bit of resistance, and then you could push it past that resistance point. So if you, if you watch, I'll stop when I feel the resistance, and then I could go past that point. 
So when you're taking in a liquid, you want to push it, put this into whatever sample you're taking. So let me get my uh, fake DNA sample. It's just loading gel or loading dye. All right, let me back up so we can see it. All right, I'll submerge it down to the resistance, put it into my sample, and then release. And you can see I got the sample in there. Now when I'm ready to expel the liquid, I'm going to push down and go past that resistance point to make sure I got everything out of that tip, remove it, and then I can let go again. All right, what a lot of people do is they'll put it into the well and then release it, and they just suck up all their sample that they had just inserted in there. So that's how to properly use a micro pipetter. All right, now I'm going to show you how to load a gel. So in here, this is a fake gel that we have in here. Uh, it's not real. It's um, for practicing pipetting for you guys. The real gel is going to be much uh, more fragile than this one, so you need to be really, really careful with it. Um, so whenever you're, you're loading DNA samples, even though this is just pretend, when you're using real DNA, you need to use a different uh, tip every time. So I'm going to get this tip out of here, put into a garbage, and get a new tip on here. All right? I'm going to push down on my plunger until I feel that resistance. Then I could insert the tip into our DNA sample and release the plunger. All right, now the DNA is all in that tip. You can see it there. And now I need to load it into one of these wells within this gel. All right, so I like to use my free hand to kind of guide it into the proper well. All right, make sure you're, you're in the well, but you don't want to puncture it. So you just want to be hovering inside of the well, and you're going to release your liquid, remove it, and then you can let go of the plunger. All right, I'll do that a couple more times. Again, new tip is needed, so I'm going to get rid of this one. New sample, new tip. Push the plunger down to resistance, insert it into my sample, release the plunger. Got a tip full of DNA. Let's go into the next well. All right, new tip, new sample, and I'll go to the next one. New tip, new sample. All right, and what you'll see is those samples are now in each of those wells. So if we, if I can get a good angle on this, you can see that they're kind of suspended inside of those wells. And that's what the DNA is getting, that's, that's what it should look like. Um, now hopefully your skills will be somewhat on par with mine, but don't get your hopes too high. All right, now we're ready to run the gel now that we've loaded our DNA. Um, so what we're gonna need is our power source right here. And we're gonna need the, the top that has the electrodes connected to it. So this top just slides right onto the chamber. All right. So now the chamber is connected to the power source. I'm going to put the power source on medium. Some of them will have just low, medium, and high, and some of them will have uh, like actual voltage that you have to control. So we'll put it on medium, and we're going to throw it on. The light is on, indicating that it's on. So there should be electricity flowing through uh, the chamber now. And one way to make sure is if you look really closely at that wire, which we're not really getting, there we go. You can see the bubbles coming off of that. Those bubbles mean that it's working. Now this is a fake gel and it's, it's uh, not actual DNA, so nothing's really gonna happen. But what would happen is each of these samples that we have, as the electricity is flowing through it, it's gonna slowly start to migrate. So that purple dye, is going to move up, and once it gets about two-thirds of the way up the gel, we'll stop it, and, uh, and then we'll get to staining, which is next.